Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the brand new Chanel Ultra Wear Flawless Foundation. Uh, they just came out with this for fall 2016 and I was so excited to try it. I'm going to give you a full review and thoughts on this foundation, but I also wanted to throw in a couple of more ultra high-end products that I have uh, recently purchased and one of them is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. Obviously not brand new, been around, but completely new to me. And then I picked up a Chanel Ultra Hydrating Lip Color and I wanted to review it as well. So I'll throw those in at the end, but first we're going to jump right into the new Chanel foundation. So first, I just want to cover all the basics of this foundation. It is one fluid ounce and it retails for $60. It's a very expensive foundation, even for Chanel. But the packaging is absolutely beautiful. It is a glass bottle. It comes with a pump, which I absolutely love, and it has the beautiful Chanel logo on the top. I also wanted to read to you what they said about the product. It says, experience flawless wear that moves with you. It's long wearing foundation glides on smoothly for a seamless second skin effect. It says, a light diffusing complex creates natural luminosity while absorbent powders leave a perfect matte finish which was a little bit confusing to me when I ordered how it can be a light diffusing luminosity but leaves a matte finish. So, and then it claims that it is buildable coverage from medium to full. So I was so excited to try this new foundation. If you've recently watched my ride or die tag then you'll know that the Chanel CC cream is my ride or die foundation per se. So I really wanted to give the Chanel foundations a good try. Since this one was brand new out I wanted to give it a go first. So let's just go ahead and get into my thoughts on this foundation. So I will just go ahead and tell you, I absolutely hated this foundation and I was so incredibly disappointed. It says second skin effect um, on the website like I just read you and it completely looked like a mask on me. It felt very lightweight, but it looked extremely heavy. I won't say that it looked cakey so much, but it just looked heavy, very makeup-y. Um, it did have the medium to full coverage that it claimed, so it covered a whole lot, but it completely just put a mask on my skin. Um, and another thing is I think that my skin used to be combination to oily. Now it's really become more normal to combo, and so I think I've been like buying foundations that are more geared towards oily skin because that's what I used to have, and now I don't. So um, it looked very dry, and it didn't like cling to dry patches because I don't have dry patches, but it looked very drying on my skin. It kind of just like wrinkled up my skin and made me look a whole lot older than I am. I do have fine lines around. My eyes, I have laugh lines, and I've got forehead lines as well, and it just really um, accentuated those lines, sank into those lines, and it just brought attention to those things where I'm really starting to age, but it made it look 10 times worse, and made like, me look 10 years older. So that was a definite negative for me, and it also had a very matte finish, which Right now, I am looking for more of a natural finish. I don't want dewy, but I just want more natural satin finish. And I thought since it said, you know, I had a luminosity but left a matte finish, I thought it would kind of be in the satin range. But I don't know where the luminosity comes from. Like I said, it was very confusing to me, but it definitely has a matte finish. So even though I did not like this particular foundation, I actually would recommend this to oily and super oily skin types. It definitely seems like it would do such a great job of controlling oil. Um, obviously, if you're super oily, you normally don't have like fine lines and wrinkles for it to settle into. And it did have a pretty matte finish, so that's also something that you might be looking for. Um, if you want to splurge on an ultra high-end foundation and you have oily skin, definitely give this one a shot. Um, I did want to just show you really fast what 12 Beige Rose looks like. Um, it is not a super thick foundation, but it's not runny either, and that is number 12, Beige Rose, in case you're fair-skinned. That kind of shows you. I also want to point out that I did apply this with a beauty blender, which makes it normally very hard to look heavy and to look cakey and mask-like, but somehow this foundation still managed to do that with a damp beauty blender, so I just wanted to throw that in there. So then at the same time that I ordered that foundation, I also picked up the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. Um, a friend talked me into buying this, and I just always had the impression that this was not suitable for oily skin. Like I said, I'm now normal to combo, but I, 
I always just assumed that it was like very oily foundation, not suitable for those with any type of oil production. Luminous Silk, I always thought that it was very dewy and that it just would not work for my skin. But I'm so glad that I picked this up because I have had a great experience with it. Unfortunately, this one is even more expensive than the Chanel. It is one fluent ounce for $64 and it also comes in a beautiful glass bottle with a pump. So and if you're wondering, I got shade number two, which is supposed to be neutral undertones. But it leans a little bit yellow on my skin, but it definitely still works. Uh, there's nothing worse to me than a too pink foundation, but a little bit too yellow can cancel out redness and still work beautifully. So um, the number two is working for me, and all of my preconceived notions of this were absolutely wrong. It actually um, is not oily at all. It has kind of a thin consistency, and it is very lightweight. It definitely has a second skin effect. But I would say that this foundation is a uh, light to medium coverage, and it does say that it's buildable. I don't find it really builds up that much. So it's a much lighter um, coverage than I expected it to be, but it's just beautiful on the skin. It definitely does have that second skin effect, but when it dries down, it just has this beautiful, almost velvety finish, and it really dries down so well. I can like run my fingers over my face and I don't have any come off on my fingers. Like there's no transfer. It just dries down so well. And I, it's very long wearing and long lasting, which I did not expect. I definitely think that this is even suitable for oily skin types. It might not last quite as long, but I feel that that is the same with any foundation for oily skin. I used to be that way, so I know that any foundation out there, even long wearing, is not going to last quite as long as you're on your skin, but it's definitely um, suitable and something worth checking into. This did not settle into any of my fine lines or laugh lines or anything like that. Um, it's not cakey. It's long wearing. I barely even have to set it with a powder, which is totally out of the ordinary for me. I just did a little bit in the T-zone, but I don't set my cheeks at all. Uh, with a powder and it still lasts just as long in those areas as it does in the T-zone. So this has been a real winner. I'm so glad that I tried it because everything that I just kind of thought about it was completely wrong and even though it was $64, um, it has been worth it in my opinion. I finally have a foundation that I feel like I can switch in and out with my Chanel CC cream that I love so much. So, And then at the recommendation of a very sweet subscriber, I picked up the Chanel Rouge Cocoa Lip Color in Mademoiselle. That's number 434. Um, and she was so sweet to recommend this to me for fair skin tones. She said it was an absolutely gorgeous color on fair skin and that it could be worn year round. And she was absolutely right. It's the lip color that I have on my lips today. And it has this beautiful black and gold packaging with the Chanel logo on the top. Um, and this is the color. I'll swatch it for you. It is just a pretty... Um, pinky mauvey nude shade and she's right it can be worn any time of the year and it's beautiful on fair skin although I think it would look great on all skin tones it really is just a good like mid-tone um, color that can be worn on a variety of skin tones but I wanted to say that this right here is $37 and that is just crazy expensive for a lipstick I know it's Chanel it does feel wonderful on the lips it's very moisturizing and smoothing and it just feels really good it kind of feels like more of a balm than a lipstick um, it's kind of on the sheer side like you have to build it up to get the color I have now but I really like that about it it doesn't have to be very precise when you go over it you can you can just kind of swap it on in the car without having to worry too much about it but um, like I was saying $37 is a lot of money for a lipstick I mean, you could buy a good high-end foundation for $37. So I did want to let you know that I have a dupe for this color, actually. So when I saw this color, I thought this looks very familiar. Kind of the sheerness of the color, the um, slight shimmer. It definitely doesn't have sparkles or glitter or anything, but there's just a slight shimmer and a shine to it. And I was like, I feel like I've seen this summer before. So I found my dupe for it, and that is the NARS Satin Lip Pencil in... Rikugin. I, I'm totally butchering that. I know. I'm going to write it in the description down below and link it so you can see the name and I'll link it down below so you can find it. Let me just put these side by side so you can see how close they are in color. Um, the Chanel looks a little bit darker in the tube than the top of this, 
but since this goes on a little bit sheer, um, it ends up being just almost the same color outfit. This is the Chanel, just so you know. And then right beside it is the NARS lip pencil. Now, it is a little bit lighter in color, but it it's just like one shade lighter. It's kind of the same tones. It's the same type of formula. Actually, when I figured this out, I put on one half NARS on my lips and one half Chanel just to see them really side by side. And it did look a little bit lighter, but it really just kind of blended together and it really is a good dupe for it. So, And the NARS Lip Pencil is $26, so you're saving $11. Um, if you go for this one, um, like I said, this one is absolutely beautiful. I love the way it wears. And um, if you're looking for a really good everyday color and you want to splurge on it, this is a really good buy. I am so glad that I picked it up. And thank you to my sweet subscriber who recommended it because it is great. But if you just can't spend that much money or this is not really your everyday color that you would just wear over and over and over again, then try, and if you like the color, definitely try the NARS lip pencil because this one is absolutely beautiful as well. So that's it for my short little review on the new Chanel foundation and then the other two high-end items that I picked up. Um, I'll definitely be sending the Chanel foundation back. I purchased it at Nordstrom, so thank goodness for their wonderful return policy. But I am so glad that I found these two items. And for those of you who want to uh, try the NARS dupe, it's a really good dupe for this Chanel lipstick as well. So I hope you found this helpful, and thank you so much for watching. Be sure and subscribe if you want to be notified for future videos, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.